leadership has to have followers. A leader, to be a leader, you must have followers. One of the best ways to evaluate whether you're truly a leader is the kind of organization you build. How many people you influence to do something. Percy Sutton was a giant in the political world and in the business world, not just in New York, but around the country. He was a civil rights activist and lawyer who represented Malcolm X. He was an entrepreneur whose New York investments included the Amsterdam News and the Apollo Theater in Harlem. He was once the highest ranking African-American official in New York as the Manhattan Borough President in the late 1960s. I recently spoke to his son, Pierre Sutton, who's also the current chairman of Inner City Broadcasting in WBLS in New York, about his father's life and legacy. I would like to welcome Pierre Sutton to WNSR New School Radio. Uh, for people who don't know about your dad, what are some of the things that come to mind when you think about your father? He had an incredible memory. If he read it, he remembered it. He worked enormously hard in, in long hours. He was always looking to help, he was almost selfless. He lived a uh, a relatively modest life style. I don't know if he ever bought a car uh, since I was a child. I think I, I, the last car he bought, he didn't buy. I got I got for him. It was mine, and I and I gave it to him. <laughs> you know, he wasn't a great driver at all. <laughs> But I had an old car that I, and I gave it to him when he, when he came into Inner City Broadcasting in 1990. You, too, have become very successful in your career. What traits did you learn from your father to help you become as successful as you've become? He had an expression. There are many out there who will not like to see your egg hatch. Hmm. You have to guard your egg <laughs> and see it, to, uh, see it through. Mm -hmm. And you have done that here with Inner City Broadcasting. Yeah, yeah. the opportunity to, to create Inner City Broadcasting came through him. Um, he was um, uh, the owner of WLIB Radio at, at 125th Street and Lenox Avenue, uh, liked him and the way he handled himself in the 1968 riots. Um, over the air and told him that when he was going to retire shortly and that he would um, uh, sell uh, to a group that Percy Sutton formed and as a result of that in 1970 myself and Percy Sutton uh, um, incorporated WLIB uh, rather Inner City Broadcasting Corporation. Talk about what you're doing to sort of revamp uh, or to make Inner City Broadcasting um, as many people say, radio is a, a dying phase. You're you're trying not to do that. You're defying the myth here. No, um, no I'm trying. Survival is very difficult um, for a number of reasons. Um, black radio is, is under tremendous pressure for survival. Now, why is that? Like overnight, black and Hispanic audiences lost 50 to 70 percent of their audiences, and that coupled with the general recession, which hurt black businesses more, of course, than it did uh, majority businesses. For example, 75% of black car dealers lost their uh, lost their dealerships during this past recession. Mm -hmm. And of course, those would be advertisers that would be advertised on black radio and Hispanic radio likewise. So, you know, it's, it's uh, yeah, yeah, in the general malaise, it created a rather perfect storm, you know, which the banks, are, as they will, are all too happy to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. So what are you guys doing with your programming to revamp that? And the programming is different. That's that's something that you, that's, that's almost a, uh, it's a living thing. It it it, it, um, it has its own life and it flows with the flow of the community that that, that the radio station serves. Are you introducing new types of programming? I know that you have a gospel phase. Uh, I don't know if you're heavily on the news content driven based uh, of radio. Are, are you developing new types of platforms? Uh, focusing on new target audiences? Are you doing anything? I don't want to disappoint you, so I won't answer that question. <laughs> the answer to the, all those questions, very frankly, is that at this point in time, um, uh, radio in general has been reduced 
um, regulations have gone away. We're no longer required to, as we were in, in, in the earlier days, to ascertain the community's needs and provide news and public affairs programs and public service announcements which meet those needs. Mm -hmm. Those needs were removed and uh, there was a, used to be a limitation on the number of radio stations you, can, uh, you could have in any market or across the country. And those have had all been lifted. So now you have a couple of entities that own thousands of radio stations. And as a result of um, the eradication really of rules um, of the road in terms of broadcasting, along with the uh, accumulation of radio uh, by a finite number of hands, uh, resulted in the commoditization of, of, of radio. Uh, however, radio remains the last free me medium in America. Nothing else can you get free, <laughs> media-wise. Nothing else can you get free. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, for that, it, re it remains a unique uh, delivery system of information in America. Inner City Broadcasting Corporation is composed of radio stations in New York, California, Pennsylvania, Mississippi, and South Carolina. It's not a public state. Uh, it, is a, it is a place where you struggle with people who joined you for $20 a hundred years ago and who, who made more money than General Motors that paid there, who are always fighting you. Uh, we're radio stations. We have one cable TV system, and we produce a show called Showtime at the Apollo. Uh, where the places I lost 26 million, I will always remember that because I lost 26 million dollars there. I took it out of bankruptcy court and tried to make it work. It didn't work. Going back to, to your father, Percy Sutton, um, do you remember your last conversation with him? Sure. Uh, I remember having a, a conversation with him as an adult. I, I don't remember when it was as an adult. It was when it was interesting because um, so many years had intervened, but I uh, recall for him when he gave me the worst whipping of my life. <laughs> and, as, and as I told him, I told him uh, later in, at the, in this later conversation, you know, I didn't do that. <laughs> you know, but, but that, you know, that whipping that you gave me on that occasion, I did not do that. <laughs> you know, I could say that to you now. Now you can believe me. <laughs> He said, that's okay, you got away with a lot of stuff. <laughs> you got away with a lot of stuff. So, you know, okay, so that's okay. <laughs> I guess all things are balanced. You know, right, right. Else, that, I thought that, that amused me as I, as I look back. Um, mm -hmm. Just about everything in his life was, was around civil rights. Just about everything was connected in some way to civil rights and, and human rights. So I had the opportunity, I guess if you think you like, I had the opportunity uh, to, to be exposed to... Um, um, people that I would not have otherwise been exposed to. I um, had the occasion to know Malcolm X. I, I, I had to, you know, I met people, um, Martin Luther King, I met people that, um, through him, that I would not otherwise have met, exposed to events. I was at the March in Washington. I mean, I, this is a, uh, I didn't know it was going to be all that it turned out to be later on. I just remember being in a, in a car with a bunch of people of my father's generation driving down through Baltimore uh, and into Washington, D.C. to attend this, uh, this event, uh, which turned out to be a piece of history. I remember uh, being on, uh, going down to Mississippi and seeing um, on the hooded Klansmen directing traffic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that there was one thing that, uh, that I think that he uh, accomplished that, that will, will be his legacy forever. Again, unsung is his creation of the SEEK program. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the SEEK program? Yes. I know a lot of people who benefited from it and still are. Yes. <laughs> the shame of it is that every year they have to struggle to, to, to keep financing going for it, but uh, there, there have been so many people that have benefited from that, all of them from uh, communities like ours who uh, um, would not otherwise have gotten a higher education. 
as we close, uh, for those who are curious, and I spoke to a couple of people uh, today uh, about interviewing you, and they said, please ask him, how is his mom doing? Oh, thank you. Um, mom lost her champion, and that's, uh, that's uh, she, she was so much to my mom, uh, and uh, she will ha forever have a hole in her. The loss was, uh, was more than profound, um, but she's, uh, her health is good, and she's, uh, her mind is sharp, mm -hmm. so uh, that's how she is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's always some, it's interesting, I saw a picture of her, um, I believe it was at the memorial service, and she looked just like Lena Horne. I don't know who you spoke to, but uh, Dave Dickens calls her Lena. <laughs> Does he really? Oh, that's because, so funny. Because of that resemblance going yeah. back when, when she was younger, and, and, and I guess Lena was certainly, you know, going back a number of years, <laughs> she, she certainly uh, bore a certain resemblance to, 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 uh, to Lena Horne. Well, on that note, uh, I thank you for agreeing to do this interview, uh, and uh, I wish you well in uh, Inner City Broadcasting well and all of your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. This is Roy Paul for WNSR New School Radio.